What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. And today, we got a top 10 song reaction to songs that deal with emotional issues. Uh, you'll get it as we get into it. some great artists on this one. Brought to us by our patron, longtime supporter and friend of the channel, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Always appreciate you and all the patrons. If you like to help us out in any way, check out the Patreon link below. This is the first top 10 somehow that I've done for Richard. Trey has done all the other ones. It's kind of the way it worked out. So I'm looking forward to this one. So let's go ahead and dive in. With number 10, you see it on the screen. We got Gas Panic by Oasis. It's from their fourth album, Standing on the Shoulder of Giants in 2000. Richard tells us Noel wrote it, the song at a time when he's having panic attacks due to battling a prescription drug addiction. I've never heard this one. I've never dove into anything besides really what's the story, Morning Glory, and then some different song reactions and stuff we did for Oasis, but never into another album. So I have not heard this one. Thanks again, Richard. And if it's your first time joining us, the music will not be in the video, but it will be at a link below. So if you want to listen along, check that out. I'll have the lyrics up as always. Let's get after this one. Well, there you have a gas panic by Oasis. Exactly what I said at the start and what Richard has shared. I mean, you can tell when you know it going in the song, this is about withdrawal from drug addiction. Well, Noel also talked about that when he was going through these times, he'd usually wake up Meg and she would have to talk to him all through the night because he was having all these obviously withdrawal issues and seeing visions and panic attacks. And this partic one particular night, she didn't wake up. So he actually grabbed his guitar and he wrote this song. So that's how oftentimes the greatest songs are inspired by the most difficult of circumstances. But he talks about it right away. Verse one, what tongueless ghost of sin crept through my curtain, sailing on a sea of sweat on a stormy night. I think he don't got a name, but I can't be certain. And in me, he starts to confide. So you already feel like right away it pulls you in like, man, this dude is going through some stuff. And then the chorus, and my family don't seem so familiar. My enemies will all know my name. And if you hear me tap on your window, better get on your knees and pray. Panic is on the way. And, you know, he just keeps going through that. Very powerful song. Had all the Oasis trademarks, right? We have some instrumental solos along outro. You have all that sound, but the lyrics themselves are very powerful. Good vocal performance. Really enjoyed that one. We'll head over to number nine. And we have the Airborne Toxic Event, The Book of Love, live from Walt Disney. That's uh, a concert hall album from 2010. Richard said this is a live cover version of the Magnetic Field song. It features a lovely dedication to lead singer Michael Jolette's grandmother. Let's check this one out. The Book of Love, the Airborne Toxic Event. What a beautiful story talking about. His grandmother wanted him to, to sing him something, sing her something while we, she was basically on her deathbed, but not one of his songs because they're too loud and screaming. So he, he sang this song. What a beautiful song. One, when I heard him speak and then I heard him sing, I was taken aback. I didn't expect his voice to be that low. Just a beautiful song. The strings work perfectly. And obviously it's a song about love. I like the way it starts. The book of love is long and boring. No one can lift the damn thing. It's full of charts and facts and figures and instructions for dancing. But see, so you think when the song starts, it could start out negative towards love. He starts with that chorus. My favorite part of the whole song is just that I, I, and he holds that a level when you read it to me and you, you can read me anything. Then it's music. Some of it's just transcendental and some of it's just really dumb. But I love it when you sing to me and you can sing me anything. And then it's well, it's long and boring, written many years ago. It's filled with flowers and heart-shaped boxes and things we're all too young to know. But I love it when you give me things. You ought to give me wedding rings. So no matter how dumb love is or, or boring or difficult it seems, this person wants this other person to always bring it to them by reading it, singing it, and giving them things and ends up with the wedding rings. That is a really, really nice song. Let's move on to number eight. We have Keen Bend and Break. Richard said it's the fifth single from their debut album, Hopes and Fears, in 2004. I think this song is about getting through depression and trying to come out the other side. I didn't know anything about Keen. You may not either. They're an English alternative rock band from East Sussex, formed in 1995. They achieved mainstream, achieved mainstream international success with the release of the album this comes off of, Hopes and Fears. It topped the UK charts, won the 2005 Brit Award for Best British Album, and was the second best-selling British album of 2004. It's also one of the best-selling albums in UK chart history. So obviously, if you're in the UK, you know these guys. I'd never heard of them, so I just want to know a little bit about them. Let's check it out. Bend and Break by Keen. Great vocal performance. I like the piano too. I thought it really went to the subject matter of this song. It starts out, when you, when you forget your name, when old faces all look the same. Meet me in the morning when you wake up. Meet me in the morning. 
then you'll wake up and then you get into this chorus. If only I don't bend and break, I'll meet you on the other side. I'll meet you in the light. If only I don't suffocate, I'll meet you in the morning when you wake. So definitely about depression. And actually on that note, Tim from the band talked about this. He said, in bend and break the chorus, which I just read, is more about getting through a really dark state of mind and emerging into brighter, happier times. The old saying, the darkest hours just before the dawn is very true and potent, I think. People often say that with proper depression, things can seem unbearably awful as your thoughts run around each other in the dark of the night. But when the sun rises, you can get more perspective and see things in a more hopeful way. I think part of that is to just the isolation of night, right? When you lay down to go to sleep, you're truly alone in your thoughts. Maybe the rest of the day you can distract yourself, but there's no running away from it then. And that's when those negative thoughts and quote demons come at you. But once the day breaks, the light is there. You're awake. You may be around other people. You're least up and doing things and you can start to see things hopefully from a different perspective. That was a really powerful song. Now we'll go on to number seven, a very unique title. We got Detlef Shrimp from Band of Horses. This is the live acoustic version. It's off an album called Cease to Begin in 2007. Richard said it's named after the famous Seattle basketball player. According to singer Ben Bridwell, he used the name as a working title, but it stuck. The song seems to be about a loved one who has done something unforgivable, but who is still loved in the protagonist's eyes. Or, Richard says, maybe it's about Detlef's move from Seattle to Portland. And if you don't know anything about Band of Horses, because I didn't, American Rock Band formed in 2004 in Seattle by Ben Bridwell. It's re they've released five studio albums, including 2010's Grammy-nominated Infinite Arms. Let's check out little Devil Shrimp. Familiar with, uh, with his basketball play being a basketball guy, but uh, let's see how he's used in song. Band of Horses, Devil Shrimp, the acoustic version. Yeah, I think this song is definitely about uh, someone, your significant other. You're, he's singing, I'm guessing, to his girlfriend who, I don't know if she did something or she's just leaving him. And, and she has some harsh words because in the first verse, and take a little walk when the worst is to come. And I saw you looking like I never thought. And you say you're at a loss or forgot that words can do more than harm, right? Those words can damage you way more sometimes than physical stuff. And then he talks about the town's going to talk, but these people do not. So... You know, I don't think there's any communication. They're kind of a clever little line. See things through to the very minimal, but what's it going to cost to be gone? If we see you like, I hoped we never would. And then the chorus, when eyes can't look at you any other way, any other way, it, it just sticks in your head. The instrumentation on this was nice. It's acoustic version. You got the pianos there. You got the acoustic. It works perfectly for the power of the song. His voice is very good. It draws you right into what he's saying. You almost hang on every word. It's got a slower tempo. It just works perfectly and nicely done song. Enjoy that one. Now we'll move on to number six. You see it below De La Rentos, the song Patardu. I probably said that wrong. Of the album Little Sparks in 2012. They're a Dublin band. Richard says this song was inspired by some graffiti that frontman Kieran McGinnis saw in Spain. At the time, Kieran, who was adopted, was in the process of searching for his birth parents. And the word, man, I'm going to have to say it again, Patardu, which means firecracker, resonated with him. He said, Quote, it became the template of what I wrote the song about. I guess I was the spark. Petter do. See, I could go back through the magic of editing and fix the way I butchered the title of this song at the start. But I'm not going to do this because I'm an honest guy. I butchered it. It's a really good song. You know, it has a drawback instrumentation as a lot of these songs do, but it utilizes a driving drum throughout, which kind of just drives the momentum of the song. So even though it's sang in, in kind of a, a softer way, I do enjoy that part. And Kieran actually talked about this a little bit. He said he did want to write this song about the search for his, his birth mother through, through adoption. And he says, I sat down and wanted to write the song about it. Not a song, but the song, because I didn't want to write the song 10 times. I spent ages on it, just getting it right, getting the words right. Eventually it came together. It's gas because it happened a couple of times in this album. As a result of that process, we've written our best songs ever. What a, what a lead up to this album. Really did enjoy that one. Thought it was well done. Now let's move on to number five. You see it below. Monaco, What Do You Want From Me? From their Music For Pleasure album in 1997. Richard says, it's a song from New Order's bassist, Peter Hook's band, Monaco. The song reached number 11 on the UK charts. It's either about a toxic relationship or maybe drug addiction. Well, let's try to let's try to figure this one out together. Well, there you have it. What do you want from me from Monaco? The instrumentation on this is a little more fast paced, a little different, kind of wins to the mood though. 
because I think Richard's right. It's either about a toxic relationship or drug addiction. I can also see them both in there. I don't know which one. So if you know some story behind this, leave it in the comments below after you finish the video, of course. But he starts out saying, there is one thing that I would die for. It's when you say my life is in your hands because when you're near me, your love is all I need. Now I can't imagine. So you're thinking, yeah, it's a relationship. But then here's where the drug part comes in. What do you want from me? It's not how it used to be. You've taken my life away ruining everything and that's the the mantra that's repeated throughout the song so it could be a toxic relationship where this person's basically ruined their lives and oftentimes in those things they estrange you from your friends your family you have nothing left or obviously the drugs they've taken everything from you your friends your family same thing and, and maybe your career and money and health and everything else so i don't know what it's about either but i know it's it's a really good song the bass work as you can imagine is top notch on this one now we're up to number four the avid brothers february 7 from the album the carpenter in 2012 which i found was produced by the great rick rubin Richard said this is a song written by Scott Avert. When asked, Scott said the song referred to a lesson he learned on that date, so on February 7th, but didn't expand on what lesson he had learned. Maybe infidelity or addiction, Richard says. Well, let's try to figure this one out too. The Avid Brothers, February 7th. Nice song. Really good song. Well, well written. Um, and also... <laughs> I don't know if Richard's influencing me here, but it, I think it's about infidelity. I see where it could be about drug addiction. I'm gonna go with the infidelity. That's the way, that's the lens I saw it through, but I guess that's the beauty of it. You can see it through whatever lens you want. But verse one, I went on the search for something true. I was almost there when I found you. Sooner than my fate was wrote, a perfect blade, it slit my throat. So he, he had this fate and it got changed like that and beads of lust released into the air when I woke you were standing there. So I could see where that could be addiction as well, but it's another verse in it. And then the chorus, there's no fortune at the end of a road that has no end. There's no returning to the spoils once you spoil the thought of them. There's no falling back to sleep once you've awakened from the dream. Now I'm rested and I'm ready. I'm rested and I'm ready to begin. I'm ready to begin. And at the end, you know, when he goes on, this, the, the lyricism in this song is great, but it, when he repeats those lines, the ending chorus, they have this almost like, it's not a lullaby, but it, it gets that kind of vision in your head when he's rested and ready to begin. Fantastic production by Rick. Instrumentation is tight and well, well written. So maybe my favorite written song, some of the favorite written lines at least that we've come across so far. Now we're already to the top three and we have Teenage Fan Club Mellow Doubt from their album Grand Prix all the way back in 1995. Richard says, in the song, the guy seems to be struggling with the loss of his lover and is having suicidal thoughts. Obviously, it could be about drugs again, a recurring theme. And I just found, if you don't know them, Teenage Fan Club are a Scottish alternative rock band formed near Glasgow in 1989. They released 11 studio albums and two compilation albums. Mellow Doubt from Teenage Fan Club. That one was intense. I definitely think it's about having suicidal thoughts. The production on it was fantastic. I had the acoustic in one ear and the drums in the other. And I mean, when, when do you ever have a whistling solo in there? The whistling went over the instrumentation on that solo. It gives me pain when I think of you and the things together that we'll never do. At first it's cold and then it's hot. Try to be someone that I know I'm not. I'm in trouble and I know it. How I'm feeling, I can't show it. But these feelings don't go away. So. He's going to write into a significant other. It could be his parents, it could be a friend, who knows? But uh, yeah, this is a, uh, there's no choice in what I must do. Nothing is greater than to be with you. I'm in trouble and I know it, how I'm feeling. I can't show it, but these feelings don't go away. And the song is a very short song, very well done. And like I said, incredibly powerful. We got two songs left. Now we're up to number two. Alanis Morissette, Reasons I Drink from her Such Pretty Forks in the Road. 2020 album that I know she was out touring in support of before COVID hit. Richard says, uh, it's a hard hitting song about her struggles with her addictions to work, food and drink. A really powerful song. I found a interview that she did and she said this about the song. My big three are work addiction, love addiction and food addiction. And then all my secondaries are all the other lovely ones. 
I think for a long time, the general notion of addiction was so stigma filled and shaming, like shame on you for being an addict, shame on you needing to go to rehab, shame on you for lack of quote unquote discipline, which is such BS because you're not going to meet more disciplined, disciplined people oftentimes than addicts. I guess that's true. I never looked at it that way. It's actually seeing those of us who are addiction riddled as us seeking relief. It's trying to help a culture that is basically chronically stressed out. It's cutting myself and cutting other people slack and also giving a little insight. This isn't just someone gratuitously trying to cause chaos. This is someone who needs support and help and to sit across from a non-judgmental person in order to heal. Byron Katie once said, quote, drugs and alcohol, they're just doing their job. Wow, that's a powerful and thoughtful comment from Alanis. I haven't heard any new Alana since the mid 90s, so let's check this one out. Reasons I Drink, Alanis Morissette. Well, well written song because it obviously is a, a, the quote I read before the song comes from a deeply personal place. The thing I was struck with when the song started is like, wow, I hadn't heard Alanis' voice in a long time. I don't know what I think of Alanis' voice. I never really thought about it before because she's singing those angry songs. It kind of fit at the start. The instrumentation was dialed back. I'm like, I don't know. But as the song went on, it really grew on me. I think I know this was the lead single. I know this is a song that I think if I listened to a bunch, it would super grow on me. She starts out in verse one talking about the reasons why she drinks, then verse two, the reasons why she eats. But the reason, these are the reasons I drink, the reasons I tell everybody I'm fine, even though I'm not. These are the reasons I overdo it. I've been working since I can remember, since I was single digits. And it says she learned to play the piano at age six, composing from when she was age seven, writing her first songs at age nine. And at age 10, she made her acting debut on a Canadian kids show called You Can't Do That on Television. At 14, she signed a record deal selling two dance pop albums in 91 and 92, awarded them with a Juno Award for the Female Vocalist of the Year. So I, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that you know you're just you're driven from the time you're a very young age. I've been working since I can remember since I was single digits. Wow! And then the chorus: Here we are. I feel such rapture. My comfort is so strong. One more hit. It feels so helpful. My need. Uh, so I, I think that's you know she has to hang on to something to keep herself sane. The addiction to whatever. And in the bridge, and these are the reasons I don't even think I would quit. And these are the reasons I can't even see straight. And these are the ones whom I know it so deeply affects. And I'm left wondering how I would function without it. Strong, strong song, man. So well written, as many of these are. Now we're going to go to number one, Long Pigs, on and on. Richard says it's a 1996 song from their album, The Sun Is Often Out. is a haunting song that, again, could be about a struggling relationship or more than likely a drug addiction. Great song either way. I'd never heard of the Long Pigs. I found they were a British alternative rock band who rose to fame on the fringe of Britpop in the 1990s, comprising Crispin Hunt on vocals, Richard Holly on guitar. We have a reaction up in a song for Richard Holly, uh, so I do know who he is. Simon Stafford on bass, and former Cabaret Voltaire member D. Boyle on drums. This is number one. Let's check it out. On and on, Long Pigs. One of my favorite songs, just as a song itself, I thought it all came together. The sound of it, the melody of it, really enjoyed it. Once again, I think Richard is right on, and I don't know if I can lend any more to the fact of whether it's either about a struggling relationship. Richard says more likely a drug addiction. Man, I can see both of those things in this lyrics because he says all the songs that I've sung you more often than you know, because you're the one that I've clung to more often than I've let it show. Probably about a girl there, but then you go, I don't know. And then I wish you would leave me, and then I wish you would go, and he holds that, and then I wish you didn't need me, and I wish I didn't love, and he holds that out. You so, because I just can't go on, so please don't do me wrong. No, I won't do you harm. My love for you goes on and on. You can see both there. If I had to go, I'm going relationship, because there's no one else I want beside you. Give me your coldest shoulder to cry upon. You're never anywhere I find you. You're never anything I rely upon. I don't know, man. It could go both ways. But that one was a very good way to end this very strong top 10 list. And now I pick my favorite tracks. I've actually been dreading this, to be real honest with you, because I really like all these songs. I resonate with songs like this. I, I enjoy listening to this type of music that has that serious tone to it, a little more low-key at times. Um, I'm going to go with the Avid Brothers February 7th. Such strong lyricism on this. I'm going to go with the long pigs on and on. Like I said, there's nothing on here that isn't really good. 
I'm gonna go Keen, Bend and Break, and why not throw in the Airborne Toxic event, The Book of Love. Just an excellent top 10 list. Really enjoyed this one, Richard. Thank you for taking the time to put this thing together. It has a lot of different uh, groups and styles of groups in here, and, and that's what makes for a really good top 10 list. Let me know what you think of these tunes and any other emotional songs that, that maybe we've left out on here. And until next time, guys, I will see you.